This week for EM and 5, we're going to look at different CT findings that you'll see if you're concerned for small bowel obstruction. So things that we're going to look for are distension of the small bowel with collapse distally. We're going to look for bowel wall thickening, and then I will talk through some different signs of ischemia. So while we do get plain films sometimes to look for air fluid levels, they're really just not that sensitive or specific. So CT scans are the preference here for identifying a small bowel obstruction, specifically because you can also see if there's a transition point and possibly even identify a cause of the SBO. Now we're all taught to look for air fluid levels, but this alone can't really differentiate between an SBO versus just an ileus. So this is really important. What we're going to look for is dilated proximal bowel loops, so that's before the transition point or before the obstruction, it should be dilated greater than 2.5 centimeters. And distally, so after the obstruction, we should see collapse of the distal bowel. And what's between here is the transition point. So here's a great example on a CT of distended proximal small bowel greater than 2.5 centimeters. We then go through a transition point, and then distally, we have this collapsed small bowel. So that would be a complete obstruction. Here's another example. We can see air fluid levels, proximal dilated small bowel, and then let's track this same CT down a little bit. So we're going down further, and watch this arrow up here. This is going to be our transition point, and eventually you can see this little piece of small bowel is very collapsed, and then all the way down in the pelvis, this is small bowel that's completely collapsed. Now, if you have a partial SBO, that just means that the distal bowel is not all the way collapsed. It's certainly less than this proximal small bowel, for example, but it's not completely collapsed. An ileus just means that there's distension of the entire small bowel, but you don't actually see that distal collapse. So the next thing we're going to look for is bowel wall thickening. So a normal small bowel can be kind of between 1 to 4 millimeters, just depending on if it's distended. So the big number you're going to think for here is greater than 4 millimeters. So greater than 4 millimeters of bowel wall thickening means that it's abnormal. It's, so here's a couple examples of other causes of bowel wall thickening. So you can see this bowel wall is thick here. And here's another good example. You can see the contrast inside the bowel, and this wall is very thickened. Another interesting sign that you can look for is this small bowel feces sign. So you shouldn't actually see what looks like feces inside the small bowel. But right before the transition point, sometimes you can see this mixture of air and liquid, and it ends up looking kind of like stool. So if you see what you think looks like stool or feces inside the small bowel, you might be very close to the transition point. All right, now we have concerns that we have an SBO. There's a couple other signs that we need to look for that can be very dangerous to the patient. Because about 90% of these are very simple obstructions. They go on to have conservative management without surgery. But things we need to look for is ischemia based on if there's signs of strangulation or a closed loop because this can be very dangerous and require emergent surgery. So a closed loop bowel obstruction is kind of the equivalent of a volvulus of the colon. It can actually either get twisted or it can go through an internal hernia, like through the mesentery or maybe some strictures, and cause that strangulation. We might actually see the loop, so it could look like a U or maybe a C. Or if we're looking at it kind of on a cross section, we can see these little clusters of bowel. So here's a couple of those signs. Here's the U sign, and here's a C sign. And here we're looking at that kind of transection view, and we see these dilated bowel loops um, with some edema and some ascites around them, and this would be concerning also for a closed loop obstruction or, or strangulation. Another thing you can look for is the beak sign, so this is where it's getting pinched off. We can also look for signs where it's actually twisting or herniating. This again depends on what direction you're looking at. So here let's do a whirl sign. So here you're looking at it on the end, and you can see it's all twisted up here. That's the whirl sign. If you're looking at it from the side, that's going to call, be called the radial array. So here you can see the twisted point and all the bowels coming out from it. One more example of a radial array with some mesenteric congestion and bowel wall enhancement. Now the bowel wall itself can actually show signs of ischemia or infarct. So let's go through a couple of those. We already talked about thickening. It can also have increased attenuation if it starts getting edematous. Another thing you can see is the target sign. So let's take a look at that. So this basically means that there's edema or hemorrhage of the wall. This is a very concerning sign. That's a good example of target signs. You can also see that the mesentery where it's being strangulated can get very congested and can even have hemorrhage. So here you see this radial array sign. The, um, there's some bowel wall enhancement. And you see this hemorrhage and edema and congestion that's happening in the mesentery. It should normally be this nice dark black of the fat of the mesentery. and Instead, it's very enhanced. 
All right, on this pathway to infarct, as the bowel becomes more and more ischemic, you're going to see some different things. So you can see vasodilation or constriction. You can also see bowel wall thickening as the capillaries start getting more permeable. Eventually, we're going to see cell breakdown, which results in pneumatosis, and then it eventually goes into the mesenteric veins and the portal veins. These are very concerning signs. And eventually, once it perfs through, you're going to see free air or pneumoperitoneum. Here's some examples of pneumatosis, so these, these air bubbles in the bowel wall. And here's examples of portal gas. Again, it's a very concerning finding. So to review, for an SBO, we're looking for distended proximal bowel greater than 2.5 centimeters. But what you can really look for that's helpful is for that collapsed distal bowel. For a bowel wall thickening, you're looking for greater than 4 millimeters. And once you've diagnosed the SBO, you need to look for signs of ischemia. For example, bowel wall enhancement or thickening pneumatosis or maybe portal gas or eventually free air from perforation. Here's some references and thanks for joining us on EM in 5.